Evolution is about differences. For in evolution, only differences matter. Now, one of the ways in which we humans differ from our near primary relatives is in the degree of our behavioral variability. Everything we humans do, we do in one, more than one distinct kind of way. Now, what enables that collective learning, or collaborative learning, if you want to think of it that way, is that we can share information with one another. We can speak to one another and, and transmit information between individuals and across generations. Speech and spoken language underlie that ability. And so the origins of language, or the origins of spoken language, are ma major research questions for human origins research. This engages the attention of archaeologists, physical anthropologists, and geneticists. Now, we archaeologists look for e evidence of language in variation in the forms and, and, and the techniques used to make stone tools. The first point in the archaeological record where we see the kind of pattern variation among stone tools, similar to that which we see in, in spoken languages nowadays, is about 250,000 years ago. Prior to that, stone tools looked more or less the same from one end of Africa to the other and, and across continental scales. After about 250,000 years ago, the stone tools made in South Africa begin to look different from those in East Africa, and those in East Africa different from the, from the stone tools in Europe and in Asia, and so on. This suggests there's information being sh shared about stone tool designs, and this information is, is differing from region to region. Now, around 200,000 years ago, more or less the same time on an evolutionary scale, we see changes in the human skull. Human skulls begin to look like ours, which have a flexed bottom, and, and the flexed bottom of the skull enables people who have that characteristic to speak, like I'm doing now, to, to break sound up into very short bits and to communicate effectively. That's an important change. We know this from physical anthropology, because without a flexed bottom in your skull, it's very difficult to produce speech, and, but with a, a flex bottom in your skull, it's also very, very easy to choke. So that had to be a really important characteristic. Speech had to be an important characteristic for humans to survive with that quality. That tells us that before that property emerged, there was some precursor to spoken language, something that actually doesn't exist any longer because we all, all humans can speak who have this, this quality. Further insights into the origins of, of this ability to share information from one individual to the other come from genetics. We humans control the fine motion of our tongue and, and, and throat due to a gene called FOXP2. This FOXP2 gene is, is present in humans. It's also present in Neanderthals, an extinct relative of ours. This suggests the FOXP2 gene was present in the last common ancestor of humans in Neanderthal, so who we think lived about 300,000 years ago, so prior to the appearance of stone tool evidence for speech or, or morphological evidence from the fossils for speech. Thus, together, archaeologists, paleontologists, and geneticists work together to understand the origins of a very distinctive quality of human behavior, our degree of behavioral variability.